There are a lot of benefits when the dev team started using IEC tools to manage the infrastructure, especially for the fast growing product. So what is IEC? Infrastructure as code helps you provision resources in a data center or cloud environment using software code instead of manual settings. With IAC tools, cloud engineers or DevOps engineers can speed up their deployment process with versioning controls. At the same time, it can decrease the risk of human errors. Most of the cloud providers has its own IAC tools like AWS has CloudFormation, Azure has Azure Resource Manager, and GCP has Cloud Deployment Manager. This is a special one. Terraform is an open source tool that offers incredible flexibility and supports all the major cloud platforms, including GCP, AWS, and Azure, as well as other cloud providers such as DigitalOcean, Alibaba Cloud. Today, I'm going to use Terraform to do a real world project. Our project starts with an existing infrastructure for a static website hosted on AWS. And our goal is to use Terraform code to manage the production environment and then replicate it to create a test environment. Let's have a look at the infrastructure. This architecture includes an F3 bucket host the files for the static websites. We have set up the bucket encryption with SSE F3 and the bucket versioning is also enabled. But we disable the static website hosting as we use CloudFront to expose the website in a more secure way. At the same time, we blocked all the public access. A CloudFront distribution is used as CDN service for the contents in the F3 bucket. We don't have alternate domain for this demo as we want to make it easier. If we check the distribution domain in the browser, we can see the site is up. The method we use to control the F3 bucket access from CloudFront is OCA, which is short for Origin Access Control. This is a new method AWS recommends started from 2022. Origin Access can be viewed in the security part of the cloud distribution portal, and we can see it is being used by our F3 Origin. To secure the static website in F3, a bucket policy which only allows CloudFront access is also in place. A distribution ARA is configured in the condition part of the bucket policy. We call the existing environment prod environment here. Then we use Terraform import to import the existing resources to Terraform code we create. From the website, we can see Terraform import lets you bring existing resources under Terraform management, which is very, very useful. Once the production environment infrastructure is managed by Terraform, we can replicate the Terraform code with changed parameters and easily build another test environment. Now, let's dive into the hands-on part. Another quick note, the hands-on part in this video is very high level, which is just used to show you the main steps for the project. You can go to my GitHub repository to view the Terraform code for the project and build it by yourself. The link is in the description. I will first create the code file structure. This is my own pattern when I use self-created modules. For this demo, I put all the resources in the same module, which is static website. You can separate the module based on different services. Then I create a project folder for the prod environment. For both folders, I create main, variables, and outputs TF files, and a version file with provider information in it. Now, this is the full file structure for this project. To configure the version file, we can check the AWS provider page and just copy this piece of code and add it in the version file with the latest version, and change the region to AP Southeast 2, which is the Sydney region. Then we have a look at the F3 bucket resource. The F3 bucket resource is quite simple with a name only and lots of default settings. You can provision other resources for different types of bucket configurations. Here we just change the resource name and remove the tag as we don't need them. Also, we change the bucket name. Here we use a variable to define the bucket name for better flexibility. Now we need to use the module. Within the main TF file in the static website prop folder, we created a module block with source pointing to module folder. Then we add bucket name, which is one of the variables in the module. Here we use two variables for the project, environment and product, which help us standardize the naming of the resources. In order not to change the variable values every time when you run Terraform commands, I will assign the values to the variables and put them in a separate auto TFR files. Then we run Terraform in it to initialize a working directory. When we run Terraform plan, we could see an error which is bucket name is not expected here. This is because we missed the variable definition. 
we just add the bucket name variable definition and we run the Terraform plan, now we can see the output showing we need to add two new resources as we haven't imported the existing resources. Now we do Terraform import the add three bucket and run Terraform plan again, we see there only one resource needs to be added. Then let's go to add three bucket ACL resource page and see how to import the ACL. We can follow this to import the bucket ACL and run Terraform plan again. When we see no change here, it means the code matches the infrastructure. Now we need to add public access block resource to block all public access. Here we just customize the resource name, then we enable bucket versioning with adding the version resources. All of the resources need to be associated to the bucket using bucket ID. The next resource is server-side encryption resource. As we use SSE at 3 which is not from AWS KMS, so we remove the key ID. Here I didn't change the SSE algorithm, and let's see how Terraform helps us with the corrected configuration. Then we run Terraform import for these three resources and then run Terraform plan. Just from the output, we can see the existing SSE algorithm should be AES256. So we can just update the code and run Terraform plan. Now the infrastructure matches the configuration. After sorting out the add through bucket related resources, the next step is to create CloudFront related resources, which include CloudFront distribution, origin access, bucket policy to allow CloudFront access. In order to have the website URL, we configure the CDN domain as an output. Now we have the Terraform code ready for prod environment. It is time to create a test environment. We copy the static website prod folder to a new one and rename the folder name to static website test. Then we need to remove the .terraform folder, HCL files, as well as the state file. Then we can go through all the files and we can see we only need to update the variables where we just change prod to test. Then we run Terraform init and plan. We can see we need to add these resources. We run Terraform apply. Then we need to wait a few minutes, especially for CloudFront distribution to be deployed. During this period, we can add the website file into add through bucket. Now we can see all the resources are provisioned. Here I want to mention, during the hands-on recording, I missed the bucket policy resource, but in order not to bring confusion regarding the process, I removed this part in this video. You can check my GitHub repository to view the full code for the project and build it by yourself. Now we just copy the URL to Chrome, and we can see the website as up. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope this video can help you understand IAC and Terraform a little bit more. Please make sure you subscribe my channel if you want more practical IT knowledge and skills. Please feel free to leave your comments below and I'll see you in the next video.